everybody. Welcome back to Handmade with me, Karen. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint these really cute rustic farmhouse pumpkins. I've made a lot of pumpkins in my day and honestly, I think this is the best one. It's so cute. I have a special trick for you on how to get this rustic, vintagey texture on any cheap pumpkin that you're gonna be working with. This is the boring old plain pumpkin that we're going to be painting today, so let's get into it. So you can see that this is a pumpkin that I decorated previously and tried to clean up but it has stains and uneven surfaces. But that's totally fine because we're going to cover it all up. I'm actually going to mix my paint in a cup and yes, I know that this is basically the same color as the pumpkin, but just wait until you see the texture we're adding. So the trick to this project is baking powder. Normal baking powder that you can get at the grocery store. Put about half of your paint onto a palette and then you can put plastic wrap over the cup. And we're doing this because once we add the baking powder, the paint dries really fast and we wanna keep the exact same color for the second coat. So just mix in the baking powder and you'll want to do about the same amount of baking powder as paint. You can see that when they mix, the paint gets kind of bubbly and it expands in size. So this is the texture that we want basically halfway between dripping off the paintbrush and just being plaster. So if you have one, you can use a rough paintbrush to give this even more texture. Don't worry about it looking perfect. You want kind of a random organic texture. You might also want to grab something plastic for the pumpkin to sit on so that the paint doesn't stick to your scrap paper when it dries. So once the entire pumpkin was covered, I went over it again with the paintbrush as the paint was drying, which really brought out that texture. And then you'll want to let it dry, which takes about 15 minutes. Once it's dry, bring back the paint from earlier and once again, mix it up with the baking powder. Then just paint on a second coat and let it dry. And now after it's dry, you can just see this beautiful texture that we've added. Next, we're going to add the text. So I printed this from the computer and cut it out. Yours can say anything you want. I just thought, oh my gourd, was really funny. So we're just doing a simple transfer by coloring on the back with a pencil. Tape the paper into place and then use a sharp pencil to go over all of the outlines. And when you remove the paper, it's been transferred. Next, use a small paintbrush to color in the lines and you don't need to add baking powder to this paint because the texture from the base coat will still be visible through the paint that we add on top. While the text is drying, I also went ahead and painted the stem. I did the first coat with normal acrylic paint just to get the color on there. And then I added baking powder to the paint for the second coat to give us that beautiful matte textured look all the way up. So here's where we're at. And the only thing left to do is to paint on the flowers. All right, so I mixed up a nice palette of dusty pinks and reds, and again, we're not adding the baking powder to these. Painting flowers is easier than you might think. It's really just a few basic shapes, like a cross, a flower shape, some dots, some hearts. You can look up illustrated flower patterns online to get inspired, and practice on scrap paper beforehand, and then, trust me, Anyone can do this. Once you have your first layer of flowers painted, let that dry for about 20 minutes and put plastic wrap over your palette to save the colors for the next step. For the second layer, I mixed up two yellowy tan colors and we're going to add details to all of the flowers we already painted. Again, this is really easy. It's just a lot of hearts and dots. Well,
Once again, let that dry and then mix up a few green colors. We're going to add the stems and the leaves and this is where it really starts to come together and fill in the design that we're creating. Once that's dry, we're almost done. It's just time to add the finishing touches by adding a third layer onto some of the flowers and adding a little detail to all of the leaves. And of course, feel free to continue the design all the way around the back if you want to. So once all of that is dry, we're finished. Do you remember that boring stained pumpkin that we started with? We transformed it into this hand-painted, cozy farmhouse piece of home decor. Just look at all of that texture we added. It is so beautiful in person and it was so easy to do. I also painted some smaller pumpkins with the same baking powder technique. And I mean, if you don't wanna paint hundreds of flowers, totally fine. You could always just do the base coat and call it a day. So I'd love to know in a comment if you're decorating for fall this year and what you're making. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.